Hi everybody, my name is Nancy and I'm with the Edmonton Public Library. And today I have the great pleasure of standing in the revitalized Stanley A. Milner Library with artist Ricardo Capato. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so Ricardo has created a mural for the revitalized Stanley A. Milner Library, specifically in front of the Children's Library. So when you the viewers visit in person, It'll be the first thing you see as you walk into the children's library, but we wanted to give everyone a sneak peek of the mural, as well as talk to Ricardo a bit about what it's like to be an artist. And I know a lot of kids will be inspired by this. So um, maybe also answer some questions for all the kids out there who want to be artists themselves. So we'll start with, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, well, like you mentioned, um, my name is uh, Ricardo Copado. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a visual artist, mm -hmm. and I've been doing art since I'm a, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think my f first exposure to art was when I was little, because mm -hmm. my mom used to take me to museums mm -hmm. and galleries, uh, also buying me children's books, mm -hmm. which uh, that's what I always was so very interesting in, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm originally from Mexico. Yeah. I came to Canada uh, like 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just last year I became probably a Canadian citizen. Congratulations. <laughs> so, thank you. And, and yeah, I've been doing, I have a bachelor's degree in fine arts. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing my art ever since. Fantastic. Yeah. So for the children out there who are going to be inspired by your art, um, what would you tell them if they asked, what is the best part about being an artist? Uh, well, to me, I think the best part is like the actual act of painting, mm -hmm. right? Or drawing. Because mm -hmm. um, um, in that moment, it's like you're in your own bubble. Mm -hmm. And you are um, kind of like immersed in another world, mm -hmm. in a different place. And that takes you out of the reality, right? Mm -hmm. So that's very... Uh, it's interesting to me, but it's also very um, nice because you forget about your life and you are just focusing on that magical place mm -hmm. that is your painting, right? Yeah. And, um, and also I think another part that I like is like you mm -hmm. can actually share what is in your mind to the others, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I think a lot of kids can relate to that, you know, having a world in their mind that they want to be able to share with others, and art is one way of doing that. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's a nice part of mm -hmm. art, yes. What would you say is the hardest part about being an artist? Um, I think the hardest part is um, that sometimes it's, it's hard to put your work out there, right? Mm -hmm. In galleries, in museums. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to keep applying right? Submissions mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think at the beginning, the, the difficult part is like to put your work out there, right? Mm -hmm. So the viewers can see it. Um, slowly with the time, uh, when people is interesting mm -hmm. in your, interested in your art, yeah. um, then it becomes more smooth, mm -hmm. right? But uh, like myself, in my experience, I just think that I have to keep... Um, 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 like how do I say, like boosting myself mm -hmm. or like um, pushing myself to to keep finding opportunities and mm -hmm. um, finding places where my art can be seen, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. kind of like that. What is the most difficult part? Yeah, there's a lot of hustle, right? You gotta a hustle, continually yeah. promote yourself and exactly. yeah, chase so, after things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's kind of like the the hardest part to be an artist. Mm -hmm. But once you you're are out there and people's interest in your work, I guess uh, it becomes a little more easy, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah that's, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. So families are going to walk into the children's library and they're going to see the mural and go, whoa, there's so much to look at, you know, so many details. Um, can you first start us off by telling us a little bit about the mural as a whole? So the mural incorporates the natural world that exists in Canada, but also includes traces of history, geology, flora, fauna, science, and urban and natural landscapes that the children can often see in their surroundings mm -hmm. and wonder about. 
Also, the mural invites the child to contemplate these images and create their own dreams, right? Adventures, um, whimsical worlds. So basically, each panel symbolizes a particular story, but also all, all the pieces are connected, right? In different sections, and also the whole mural are connected to create one larger story that represents inside of a child's vibrant and vast imagination. So the main purpose of this mural is to take the viewer to other places, different worlds, and even other times in order to relate and interpret in a way that is meaningful to him or her, right? So just as a book in a library can do as you take it and make meaning in your own personal way. One of my favorite things about this mural is that you can see some, you know, buildings that you recognize, like the Hotel McDonald. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of environmental pieces as well, you know, uh, plants and animals, but there's also, you know, pure imagination and whimsy. And I love how you've incorporated all of them together. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like, like my style, my style, I guess, like mm -hmm. some other from experiences with other. Um, yeah. And galleries, mm -hmm. um, they have told me it's kind of like folk, but surreal mm, yeah. or, or naive surreal. So it's huh. kind of like in that kind of stuff what I do. That is really and, cool. And I just mentioned like I include mm -hmm. things that you see in real life, yeah. but then I put it into a whimsical way. Like yeah. Words, yeah. It's almost like I'm looking at things I recognize, but it's through a mirror and it kind of looks, you know, a little like different. So I, exactly. I recognize some of it, but some of it's clearly kind of I'm seeing for the very first time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when people walk through and they see this, what in person, what are some uh, specific things that they can be looking for? The first uh, thing is like the, the viewers are mm -hmm. going to see all the colors mm -hmm. on the mural and they're gonna, my, my intention wants them to be attracted by the yeah. color, right? F from when, when they're entering to the library, right? And then once they're standing in front of the mural, well, what's important to me was like, they can feel immersed mm -hmm. in a place where, like I said before, they can forget about yeah. the real life, but also almost feel like they're inside of a children's book, mm -hmm. right? Because this mural was, the project was kind of specifically for a library, right? Yeah. So also my, uh, when I was making it, I was thinking about like, like I want them to feel like I, they're inside of a children's book and they can create their own stories. Mm -hmm. So kind of like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every panel here is like a different page in a children's that's book. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right, yeah. yeah. For you, Ricardo, personally, what is your favorite part of the mural? Well, I think the, the colors is mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. thing that, strikes me the most yeah uh, um, and that's what I wanted the, the viewer to look at right mm -hmm. also I like it that is right in front of uh, the entrance to the children's library yeah. right and welcomes them mm -hmm. to it so it's almost like a, um, a gate mm -hmm. for the kids for the youth uh, or even for adults right mm -hmm. to come in to see what's after which is a whole world of books mm -hmm. and they can imagine, right, mm -hmm. as on the mural. And just like, uh, I guess, uh, when you're standing in front of it, um, you can just uh, feel joy mm -hmm. of watching, to, watching it. Right? Yeah. Um, and also, one of other favorite parts for me was the... Um, like the design, mm -hmm. you know, um, how all the pieces at the end, the result was. That's kind of like mm -hmm. my favorite parts of the mural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you came and you had to work on this wall, it wasn't a blank wall. In fact, these cutouts that we see here, they were already part of the wall. So you had to work around them, right? You had to build the art piece around the pieces exactly. that were already here. That's and I think right. that's really cool because they look so natural, like the colors and the shapes they look like they were always meant to go with your mural. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you say it was the most challenging part of creating this mural? To me, I think the most challenging part was um, the number of pieces, because mm. there are about 145 pieces. 145, yeah. wow. <laughs> it's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and also uh, the design, 
-hmm. itself because uh, before doing the mural, mm -hmm. there was like these pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're here on already. The mural. Yeah. yeah. So, in order to make it look uh, appealing for the viewer, right, mm -hmm. for the, uh, the site, um, I needed to incorporate my design to the wall, right, mm -hmm. to these pieces, yeah. and also the color of the pieces that were already there. Mm -hmm. So, I think that would, those were the two uh, mm -hmm. more, most challenging parts of this mural. Yeah. Totally. Some artists get to start with a blank canvas, but yours had holes in it already, exactly. these cutouts, and you had to, you know, yeah. account for them. And I think, um, but because they look so natural, like they belong, I don't think anyone would guess that, you know, you had to work around them. It looks like you designed them yourself, practically, so it fits so well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I feel like almost when you see the mural from mm -hmm. far, almost the shapes disappear yeah. within the whole mm -hmm. area, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so Absolutely. yeah, that's basically the two most difficult parts. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ricardo, and sharing some of your thoughts and your processes that went behind this mural. I know that when the Stanley A. Milner Library opens to the public, people are going to be really excited to come and see it in person. And let me tell you, viewers, you're only seeing a little piece of it right now. Um, when you see the entire mural in all its glory, it's going to wow your socks off. So thank you, Ricardo, for bringing joy and inspiration and, of course, all your whimsy. Thank you so much. Well, thanks to you. <laughs>